a panel about where are wearables headed in 2018. In case you didn't get my joke, that was wearables. So I think that's pretty smart if I say so myself. Here we've got a really cool group of guests uh, on the panel. We have on my immediate left over here, Elena from Samsung. She's the Senior Director of Marketing for Mobile Computing, Wearables, and VR. Yes, that was a lot for me to remember because I also have to tell you that over on her left is Melanie. She is VP of Fitbit. She's from Fitbit. And we've got Preston over there. He is vice president as well, Fossil Group. Yep. So just in case you didn't quite get the gist of it, we have someone from the tech side of things. We have someone from the fitness side of things. And we have someone representing Fossil Group, which like houses brands like Kate Spade, which announced a new watch here at CES 2018, as well as Skagen, and a whole bunch of others. In fact, Fossil, you've got 300 smartwatch options that you released last year uh, under all the various fashion houses that you guys sort of work with. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of let them offer their unique perspectives on the wearable space. And we're going to kick off with what do you think makes a wearable work? I think as, as the market proliferates and there's more devices that come out, actually I think people want personalization and customization. The ability to have a wearable reflect who you are. Um, it's sort of like it's your own personal branding. So I do think is probably no secret sauce per se, but from a Samsung perspective, we also believe in connected devices, right? So making sure that your device can connect to other things. It's about experiences and helping to add that value for consumers in their lives. And I think having it on your wrist is, is something that people take very personal. Um, and therefore, we need to make sure that we meet those needs. Let's move on to Fitbit. What does Fitbit think people need from wearables? Yeah, so as you may know, our vision at Fitbit is really to make everyone in the world healthier. So we believe that that key killer feature for any wearable device is health and fitness. You know, people need to see a real benefit when they wear a device on their wrist. They have to see a difference in their lives to want to put it on each and every day. And for us, that's all about health and fitness. And so we've really proven out over the years that you can see results in your health and fitness if you wear one of these. I don't know if you've seen some of our stats on that, but you know, we see that if you have one or more friends on the Fitbit platform, you walk 700 more steps a day. If you're in a challenge, you take 2,000 more steps a day. So there are real interventions that have an impact on people's lives. But it's not just about the results. It also has to be something that fits into your life. And so um, for us, combat compatibility is really important. It has to work with iOS, Android, Windows, so you can get that whole community of users on the platform. It has to have a long battery life. We have about five to 10 days of battery life, depending on which product you use. So you can track things like sleep. You can track your heart rate 24 seven. Um, and it also has to have a range of price points and form factors. It has to be something that you want to wear on your wrist each and every day. And so that collection of attributes is really what we see driving success for us in the marketplace. How about you, Preston? I agree with everything you guys are saying. For Fossil Group, um, it comes down to variety. So once something becomes a wearable and it's worn on the body, design matters, brand matters. We have the ability to reach consumers that care about brands, care about design, care about connectivity, care about fitness and across 14 brands, across several hundred SKUs at this point, we now have a spectrum of products that say, we can do these things, we can talk about connectivity, we can talk about fitness, but we can also talk about style and fashion and something that's discreet. And so sometimes the best wearables are ones that you don't know are a wearable, which in the product business is a really hard thing to do, is I want to make a thing that looks like a watch, but acts like a smartwatch. And when it comes to battery life, yes, a day is a minimum, five days is great, six months is better, yeah. a year is better. And so at what point do all those connectivity things matter? But I think the openness to multiple platforms is also critical for us. Um, yes, it's about platforms and big phone companies have different platforms they're trying to build and support. Um, we develop a lot of our smartwatches in Android Wear um, because of the openness and because we do want to build products that work with iOS, Android, but we also need to build products that work throughout the world and also are open to third-party apps. I think what we lose track of at a lot of shows like this is that it's easy to build booths that talk to hardware and specs and features, but frankly, it's the software, the services, the apps that people generally commit to and have that connection with, and having that rich set of software development is a huge part of how we do brand differentiation across 
Kate Spade, Michael Kors, Scoggin, Armani, Diesel, and all the others at Fossil Group. Um, you were nodding along. Is there something you want to add about the software? Well, I think, I think you're spot on, right, with partnerships and adding new use cases through third-party apps and making sure that the hardware and the software work together to continue to add that value. Um, it's something that we've seen uh, work very, very well for us across our portfolio and something that we're going to continue to do in the future, so yeah. We all know what your own unique points of view on wearables are. I would love to hear what you guys think are some of the the biggest challenges in the industry. And I think I know what the answer is because you know I've written about it a lot. But let's hear it from you guys. What do you think in 2018, what's the, the one thing the wearables industry needs to solve if people are going to continue buying these things? I think that from a technical point of view and a business point of view, we could probably both spend hours talking about the challenges there. But I still think most consumers, and not in this little bubble we're in, and not in the consumer electronics field, we still get the question of why. And I think that you know, every one of us has an approach to that and why we think, but phones are so darn good. And I think what we realize is that the phone isn't going away. We can make a beautiful accessory to the phone, and whether that's a hybrid smartwatch or a smartwatch or you know, some other piece of jewelry, but the idea of how am I complementing this thing in my life, which is my cell phone, and are we gonna get to the point, which we all think we will, there's going to be more and more minutes and hours in the day when that phone does start to get left behind and it doesn't feel like it's that big of a problem. So whether it's I have GPS and I go for a run and I don't need to have my phone, I have a cellular connection through my phone or my watch, um, the, as wearables go forward, it's still a very much integrated, very detailed conversation about the phone. And on a technical level, the biggest problem is still battery. I still think we know from our business back through the Misfit acquisition, when you can talk to consumers about months, years, days, and not hours, the game changes. Building on the why, we really see 2018 as a huge year for wearables making an impact on the healthcare space. So you may have seen some of our announcement recently. This is an area that we think we can actually move the needle on in a big way. So we're partnering with the FDA. We're one of nine companies chosen to work with the FDA on their pre-certification program to bring digital interventions to market faster. We're focusing on things like AFib. We just presented some papers on AFib where we can detect 98% of instances of AFib. And so these are places where we're gonna start really focusing our innovation and our technology to disrupt the market in healthcare. You know, when you think about um, other industries, right? You think about cars, you think about planes. There are thousands of sensors on these things that tell you when something goes wrong or helps you make a, make a maintenance decision on those things. We don't have that yet for people. 2018 is the year that we're gonna start seeing wearables push into that. And I think you absolutely need to demonstrate to consumers what value you bring, right? And each, each individual person has a different need state, whether it's health and wellness, or in our case, you know, connectivity is, is our biggest, what we feel, um, entry point, and it's some, somewhere where we can continue to, to kind of grow. You can take the watch from the gym to the boardroom and really not miss, miss a beat from a fashion standpoint, from a functional standpoint. Um, and then with our recent announcement on controlling smart things, you can you know, dim the lights or check your thermostat just from your wrist. And I think the more use cases, the more people see these devices, and, and quite honestly, um, all of our collective companies, we all have a different offering, which is why I think we can continue to succeed and also grow the TAM, the total addressable market together. Um, and obviously, at the end of the day, I mean, we, we do care about consumers. We listen to consumers, we evolve our devices, we add things because people ask for it. And I think that's also the most important thing, at least from, from my purview, is to continue to evolve based on what people really want and eliminate the stuff that is non-value add. We are out of time, unfortunately. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Uh, I think we answered the question of where wearables are going in 2018, and that is somewhere. Uh, and it's taking a lot of different routes there and figuring out what to do along the way. So thank you so much for joining us once again. And thank you in the audience and at home for watching uh, Engadget's wearables panel here at CS 2018. We're going to be back with a lot more stuff, so stay tuned. In the meantime, thanks once again.